Hello! Did you know that your stool can reveal a lot about your health? Yes, as gross as it may sound, in your poop, your body might be leaving important clues about how your entire body is functioning, not just your gut. And most people have no idea how to identify the warning signs the body is trying to give until now. Yes, you can learn a lot about your health from your stool. In this video, I'm going to tell you what you can discover by simply taking a quick peek into the toilet bowl before you flush it. And also whether what's coming out of you is healthy poop or not. So if you pay attention and recognize that your stool has certain characteristics that stand out or has even changed in appearance, you can seek help and solve the problem before it becomes something more serious. So stay until the end of this video because this could save your life. But first, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our health tips and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our next videos. And share this video with your friends and family. And tell me, do you take a look at your poop or are you grossed out and flush it away quickly? Where in the US or the world are you from? Write it down below. Let's get to it. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, used to say that all disease begin in the gut. There are three main characteristics you should look for in your stool to assess if it's healthy or not. The frequency you go to the bathroom, the form of your stool and its color. So let's start with frequency. How often do you go to the bathroom? Go into the bathroom is very important because it's one of the main ways your body eliminates waste and toxins. What is a normal frequency for bowel movements? Frequency varies from person to person. Many things can affect it. Your diet, how much you exercise, how stressed you are. If you are more stressed, you might go more often. If you drink enough fluids, whether you had coffee or not, seriously, there are people who drink one cup of coffee and have to run to the bathroom. It can be caffeinated or decaffeinated. It doesn't matter. So much so that the European population used to be very constipated and around the 1600s that all changed. Thanks to coffee, the frequency of bowel movements can range from three times a week to three times a day. This is normal, with the average being at least one complete bowel movement per day. And you should feel that your bowel has emptied completely, that there is nothing left in there. Some people go to the bathroom two or even three times a day. This is perfectly normal. They may have a faster metabolism, eat more fiber or have good bacteria in their gut. More than three times a day is considered diarrhea. And less than three times a week is considered constipation. With constipation, you might have a feeling of incomplete evacuation. You have to strain excessively because of the difficulty of passing stool that is hard and, and dry. So a normal frequency is three times a week to three times a day with a complete evacuation. The second characteristic you should evaluate is the form of your stool. This is to make sure your stool is well formed. This shows us that we are digesting food correctly, absorbing nutrients and eliminating toxins and waste properly. There is a scale called Bristol stool chart where stool is divided into seven types depending on its shape and consistency. Write down below which type your stool most resembles. Or you can say which type of stool you think is the healthiest. We have type 1, which are small, hard, separate lumps like rabbit pellets or gold groupings. They are difficult to pass. 
the reason they're like this is because poop is taking too long to pass through the intestine, then dries out the stool. This is a sign of constipation. We have type 2, still not the ideal poop, but it's still within the normal range. The shape is like a sausage, which is good, but it's lumpy. This indicates the individual is slightly constipated. We have type 3. These are elongated to sausage shape with cracks on the surface. Get in there. We have type 4. This is the perfect sausage. This tool is elongated, smooth and soft. This is the ideal poop. We have type 5. These are soft, separate blobs with clear cut edges that are easy to pass. This is also normal. We have type 6. These are the more mushy with raged edges, tending towards diarrhea. You should think about your diet. You might have a lactose intolerance or should avoid milk or fructose intolerance. And you should avoid dried fruits and fruit juices. And we have type 7, which is entirely liquid stool with no solid pieces. Summary. Types 3, 4 and 5 are normal. 1 and 2 indicate constipation. 6 and 7 indicate a tendency tower diarrhea. And what about this one? It has some corn kernels in it, but that's normal. It tells me two things. Your intestinal transit is fast and you should chew your food better so your body can digest it more easily. And the ribbon-like stool. If your stool is as thin as a pencil, it could be a sign of blockage in the colon or rectum. The most common cause for this blockage is a tumor. So it's important to seek medical attention promptly. And now for the third characteristic, the color of your stool. What is the ideal color? Normally, it's a shade of brown. We want your poop to have a medium to dark brown color, like milk chocolate. This color comes from a dark pigment formed from the digestion of bile called stercobilin. The shade can vary a bit depending on what you eat or the medications you take. What is green stool? Oh doctor, my poop is kind of green. Do I have a problem? Believe it or not, green can be considered a normal color. If you are a fan of kale, spinach or broccoli, if you eat a lot of leafy greens, there's no reason to worry about green poop. These vegetables are rich in chlorophyll, which, as you know, is green. Now, if you don't eat anything green or anything with green food coloring and your stools are green, it could indicate that your food passed through your digestive system too quickly, not leaving enough time to fully digest the bile. This can happen in cases of diarrhea. And another color that can be normal depending on what you eat is yellow. If you eat a lot of carrots, sweet potatoes or things with yellow food coloring, now if you don't eat any of that and your stool is yellow, you might have Gilbert's syndrome, which is a genetic condition where a person can become slightly jaundiced when under stress. Well, if you've never turned yellow and your stools have started turning yellow, you should check for fat droplets. If this occurs, it means that fat absorption in your intestine is not happening as it should. This digestion is done by an enzyme called lipase, which is produced in the pancreas. So this could indicate a pancreatic disease like chronic pancreatitis. Another relatively common cause for this type of change is the use of Orlistat, also known as Xenical or Ellie. It was a trendy weight loss drug in the 90s that works by blocking the action of lipase, thereby increasing the elimination of fat in the stool. Yellow stool can also be caused by a disease that reduces intestinal absorption like celiac disease, so liver and biliary tract disease and giardiasis should also be investigated. So the color brown, green and in some cases yellow can be normal. 
However, there are colors you should be on the alert for. One of them is tools that is dark like tar. Now, if this tool is black like tar and has a very foul odor, this indicates bleeding in the upper digestive tract, usually in the stomach, like an ulcer. In this case, the blood traveled a long way before exiting in the stool, so it had time to be digested. This change is known in the medical field as melina. Other causes besides ulcers could be bleeding in the esophagus, like from esophageal varices and cirrhosis, or from esophagitis. It's possible you don't have a stomach ulcer, but have gastritis or even a stomach tumor. You could have nosebleed and swallow the blood, which can come out black. Or if you had surgery in the upper tract of your gastrointestinal tract, it could also come out darker. However, if you are taking iron supplements for anemia or eating foods like blueberries, black licorice, chocolate cookies, a lot of red meat or grape juice, your stool might appear darker but they won't have that characteristic smell of melina. Anyone who smells it once remembers it for the rest of their lives and you don't need to worry. Another stool color that warrants attention is pale, clay colored. What does pale, clay colored stool, white stools mean? The substance responsible for the brown color of the stool is digested bile. It's produced by the liver stored in the gallbladder and then released into your intestine. So, lighter color poop can indicate a problem in that region, especially the liver or bile ducts. Either the bile isn't being produced efficiently, which occurs in liver disease like hepatitis, it can also happen when the bile is being produced, but there is an obstruction preventing it from reaching the intestine. This obstruction could be caused by a stone, a gallstone, or even a tumor. No, my stool is red. What does red stool mean? If your stool is just pinkish overall, the problem might just be the beets you ate or some food coloring. If that's not the case, this coloration could be caused by blood in the stool. When blood mixes with the stool before being digested, preserved its red color, we have a hematochesia. The main causes of hematochesia are diseases in the large intestine, including the rectum and anus. And if there's bright red blood in the stool, it can be due to hemorrhoids, anal fissures, or diverticuli. It can also appear in more serious disease like inflammatory bowel disease and tumors. Associated symptoms like pain during evacuation, abdominal discomfort, diarrhea and weight loss can help with the diagnosis. I made a video about colon cancer, which is the most viewed video in the world. I translated it to, to English, so if you haven't watched it yet, please do. And I say there, and I repeat it here, blood in the stools must be investigated. You can never, ever, under any circumstance, assume that the problem of bright red blood in the stool is caused by hemorrhoids before you are certain that there is nothing more serious going on. This can delay the diagnosis of tumors, which, if detected in the early stages, are perfectly curable. Therefore, if you have bright red blood in your stool, you need to see a doctor quickly. If this bleeding is associated with a cause of acute diarrhea and abdominal pain, it's possible that the cause is just bacteria that has invaded the intestinal wall. These type of stools may also contain mucus and pus. This type of acute diarrhea is known as dysentery. In these cases, treatment with antibiotics is indicated. Does it flow or sink? Does normal poop float or sink? Healthy poop should generally sink in the toilet. What determines whether it floats or not is the amount of fat or gas. When there is an excess of fat and gas, 
this tool may float. Oh, my partner's poop has a terrible stench. What could it be? What does very foul smelling stool mean? It's true that the smell of feces is not the most pleasant. However, the intensity of the odor can vary greatly depending on what we eat. In general, consuming red meat or spicy foods can lead to stools with a more pronounced odor. The stool from a healthy and balanced diet should have a characteristic smell. A very foul odor can indicate infections or inflammations, as food is not being completely digested. As I mentioned before, melina has a very strong smell. That's it! See? You need to pay more attention to your stool and stop being so squeamish. It's important for your health. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a lot. So if you are not already subscribed, take the opportunity to do so now and like the video. And don't forget to share. Health information can save many lives. And what will be the next video you watch? I will leave two recommendations. My video on symptoms of colon cancer and my video about the first signs of dementia that most people ignore. My name is Dr. Andre Wambier, I'm a cardiologist, and this is Dr. Dre Health Tips. Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.